this is Elisa White Gloves from Arch Enemy, and you are watching Loud TV. Um, yeah, I mean, it's intense. Working in Arch Enemy, obviously, we're a very busy band. Uh, we like to put out great music and put on great shows, and we're very fortunate to have a very wide fan base across the world, so that brings us to lots of different countries, and we play lots of shows, and uh, we've been touring the War Eternal album very intensively for about three years, and now we're wrapping that up this summer, and we're going to start touring for Will to Power. I mean, there, there's not a huge amount of pressure because we love what we do and we love Will to Power, we're very happy with the songs and um, you know we just want to make the best possible music and put on the best metal show that you can put you could possibly watch so um, we work to, we're always working to improve as a band and, and improve as musicians and individuals and um, always you know striving to keep Arch Enemy as this you know well-oiled machine. I feel like Will to Power is like a natural evolution from War Eternal, so um, it is different. It's I think it's more open, more varied, more diverse, but it also feels very fearless, strong, um, adventurous, and interesting. I mean, Jeff Loomis is a great addition to the band. He fits in seamlessly. I mean. He's an amazing person, amazing guitar player, and of course he played some amazing solos on Will to Power, so people will be really happy to hear his solos there. Um, and of course, having him with us live, he brings a lot to the stage, even on the on the older songs, on the Christopher Amott songs. So, um, yeah, I think I think Jeff Loomis fans will be really excited to hear his his solos on Will to Power. Yes. Jeff didn't write with Michael because Michael was already like writing so well with Daniel that we just actually had like too many ideas. But um, I'm planning on doing some stuff with, with Jeff outside of Arch Enemy anyways, so all of Jeff's ideas are really good and I've heard them and they're, they're gonna be released so people will hear them. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm actually, I've been working on a solo project for, the, for about a year, um, but of course it's limited to whenever I have time outside of Arch Enemy, which is not very much. So, <laughs> um, so Jeff is going to be one of my collaborators on my solo project, so, um, because how can you say no to that? <laughs> You're not, you're not the first person to tell us that you hear some very early Arch Enemy influence in this album, and I actually hear it as well, uh, which is exciting for me because any time we have done like earlier songs like Bury Me an Angel or Fields of Desolation, we've, I've, I've, I've actually done those songs live a few times. Um, some, some other, The Immortal, um, and I love those songs, and I, I find them a lot of fun to sing. Um, I don't think there was a conscious effort to like revert back to any older Arch Enemy styles, but we're all death metal fans, you know, and we all love thrash metal and we all love punk and, um, you know, we all love just like straight to the point heavy riffs and so there's definitely a lot of that in Will to Power. I mean, the, the Black Earth um, tour actually happened because Arch Enemy played Loud Park. We actually headlined Loud Park, and we had Johan come on stage with us, and Chris, Mike's brother. And so we had like a kind of, you know, family get together on stage, and we all respect each other as musicians, and, you know, Johan is a fan of Arch Enemy now, and I'm a fan of Johan's albums with Arch Enemy, and so um, as a way to sort of thank Japan for giving Arch Enemy its, its start in the very early days, um, Mike decided to go and do uh, this little Black Earth tour. Um, and so I don't know if that maybe sort of like rekindled his love of the older Arch Enemy songs. It's possible, you'd have to ask him, but um, I mean, there's always an evolution in a band, which I think is a good thing. And it's very interesting to see a band like Arch Enemy where they, they and we have gone in many different directions, but it's all very cohesive nonetheless, and I think that it's all really good. <laughs> I mean, I think it's cool, you know, I was on stage with Johan and I, in Japan, and I saw how happy the people were just seeing us on stage together and hearing the older songs, and it was really cool for Johan, too, to be able to sort of relive 
those songs on stage, so I thought it was a nice treat actually for, for the Japanese audience. Yeah, Angela is the manager, but um, Angela has been the manager of Arch Enemy since 2008. Um, and so she asked me to step in and, and sort of help her out <laughs> by taking over as vocalist so she could focus on management. And since we've done that, it's been very good for her um, because she's able to still be a part of this great band that she loves, but she doesn't have to be doing two jobs at once, you know? And it's great for me because I love this band and I love the music we do, but like I'm not crazy about doing the management stuff so <laughs> so we're kind of we're like a pretty good duo actually working together uh, it's the same as it's always been you know I, I met Angela probably 10 years ago or maybe a little bit more than that and um, I met her because she was she reached out to me as a mentor actually um, she's sort of like you know my fairy godmother you know like helping me and like giving me advice and and not really when it came to singing but just when it came to like handling life on the road because it's not it's not easy and um, so yeah and nowadays you know I speak to Angela every day she's the manager not only of Arch Enemy but also of Alisa my solo project she's the manager of that too and um, when she stepped down from the band she completely stepped down from the music side of things a hundred percent and I took over there a hundred percent and so uh, yeah we're very good friends we talk every day and it's you know I feel like we're like this you know like strong sisterhood of of metal ladies and we're working towards a common goal which is just to like grow Arch Enemy and reach as many people as we can with our music. I mean I, I think I just unleashed a little bit on, on this album you know I, I never felt restrained in any way with Arch Enemy but I also knew that like stepping in with War Eternal I, I know what Arch Enemy sounded like and I was like well why would I mess with a good thing I love what Arch Enemy sounds like so I just kind of did what sounded the most Arch Enemy to me and I think we have an amazing album with War Eternal but with Will to Power you know at this point we had played like almost 300 shows together we had traveled all over the world we had seen uh, unprecedented success with War Eternal and so now I, I guess I felt a little bit um, more confident to just like unleash all of my inner demons you know and and you know I did I did go pretty diverse with War Eternal but I think on Will to Power I went a little crazy <laughs> we always like to be able to give a really awesome performance um, and for us I love that kind of stuff. I love having a beautiful backdrop and the, the set changes and there's different levels and there's depth and there's pyro and there's smoke. And whenever it's, it's doable, we're always going to do that. Um, but we also want to be able to scale it down to like maybe, you know, a, a 1,000 person club show and also scale it up to 100,000 person festivals. So, um, yeah, we're, we're working on that now actually. Yeah, I mean, I would, I would love to play Australia with Arch Enemy because I've, I've played Australia before and Arch Enemy has played Australia before, but we have never together played it. So I'm hoping that we'll get to Australia on the will to power cycle.